From Cali to Tally, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source, and this is Wake Up Warchant. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What up, everybody? Uh, here we are. We reconvened. Time to do a show. Corey, how are you? I'm good, buddy. I am good. Trying to recover from a pretty long weekend, but I'm back in the mix, back in the fold, ready to talk some Florida State athletics. Whoop, whoop. How was New Orleans, man? It's my favorite American city. It was uh, It was fun. It was uh, a lot of late nights, a little, a little too much maybe uh, imbibing, uh, kind of caught up with me. But I'm trying my best. I put on a brave face. I'm trying my best to uh, get through this thing. All right. Um, well, let's get through it. Let's. Uh, get I want a ton going. of money at the casino because I always do. Yeah. All right. There you go. I like Harris. I uh, went Harris to Bourbon nice. Street, but didn't do any of the gross Bourbon Street stuff. Uh, not gross. I mean, I just you know I'm I'm in my forties. I'm not I'm not throwing beads in anyone. Uh, but you know, listen, just listen to live music and ate really good food. That's the beauty of New Orleans. It is. It's a beautiful thing. All right. Um, let's talk about the beauty that is Florida State football. Yeah. Uh, so when we left on Thursday, uh, Florida State did not have an offensive coordinator. They still don't have an offensive coordinator, at least uh, as of the taping of the show. Um, the wise Gene Williams, I think, said on Monday that uh, something should come down Tuesday. Uh, it'd be surprising if something didn't come down by Tuesday. And it looks like Kendall Bryles has sort of emerged as the uh, lead candidate uh, your thoughts on him, I guess, uh, on Hugh Freeze, whatever you want to talk about, Corey. I'm I'm under the weather, so I'm I'm going to lean on you, brother, man. Oh, all right. You're are you feeling okay? You just a little cold? Yeah, I don't know, man. I think whatever that sore throat nonsense you had a few weeks back, man. Just I don't know. I, I must have caught something. Uh, yeah, I went to the I'm quite shaking it either. I'm still kind of. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm under the weather, but I'm I'm not above it. Yeah. Uh, hadn't really uh hadn't really gotten a whole lot better since then. Yeah. You know. I was thinking about you when I was, I didn't listen to the Hugh Freeze press conference, um, but I did read the quotes, <laughs> and I was thinking about you and wondering when you when you read when you see him talk and you read the, his quotes, do you kind of go, Ooh, "We dodged a bullet there." Oh, was that rhetorical or was that an actual question? Oh, I'm asking you, like legitimately, you because I know you wanted him. He's he's playing to the base. Um, well, I, yeah, he is. But that is his base, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the choir, that's, brother. That's, that's him preaching to his choir. I mean, literally preaching to the choir. But, I mean, part of me did notice that just he was getting killed on, on Twitter. And, I, and I, I posted a little funny gif of Alonzo Mourning. There's the, the gif of Alonzo Mourning just shaking his head in, in disgust and disappointment. But then two seconds later, kind of just, you know, cocking his head to the side. Like, well, you know, on the bright side. Just thinking right. something to himself, uh, you know, on the bench, and I'm like, that's exactly what Florida State fans must have been feeling when they when they found out that you know Hugh Freeze was going to Liberty. Like, darn it, man, lost out on him, needed that guy, and then the press conference happens, and they're like, well, you know, on second thought, good thing we don't got that uh, that Looney Tune uh, in Tallahassee. So, I mean, it just for for my own uh, personal, I don't know, livelihood, life. It would have been hard for me to interview that guy every week. Nah, just, been I, fine. I don't know why. I mean, I'm sure we wouldn't ask him. We didn't ask Walt Bell any personal life questions, but the guy just to me uh, seems like such a phony. It would have been really hard to not like hold that against him every time he was talking to me about um, how how they're gonna, the, you know, how good NC State's defense is or something. <laughs> or what they're doing better on offense, or Tamori and Terry is the best player he's ever seen. Whatever he might have been telling me, I would have thought, man, you're just you're just a phony. You're just a phony. It's gross. Yeah. But anyway, he's Liberty's problem. I'm sure it's not even a problem. I'm sure he'll get Liberty to be sort of good, and then in three years he'll be coaching where? Uh, Tennessee, Ole Miss again, Mississippi State. Like, who knows? He'll be back in the SEC, I'm sure, in two or three years because we all forgive and forget. Yeah. Maybe Auburn. Maybe Auburn will get him. Yeah, Maybe one year. Maybe if he goes eight and four at Liberty, the Auburn will come calling. That's what they need. Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as Bryles, I'll be honest with you, I don't know enough about him. I, how long has he been at Houston? Just one year. He was uh, he was Lane's OC, uh, Lane's first year at FAU, and then he went to Houston. So, yeah, and again, that last name has a has a stench to it. 
a bad one, like one of the worst in the history of college athletics. So it's his daddy, though, you know, not him, right? Not yeah, and you're not you're not punished for the sins of the father. I don't know. I th- was he not on that staff though? He was, yeah. Yeah, I, he's and, part of that staff, and he certainly uh, vehemently defended his dad at the time. All that stuff came out, and um, which I mean, I know that's what that's what sons do. Um, but again, that's a little bit of a stench there with that with that name, and certainly what Baylor was all about for about a decade with his dad. Um, but I also realize, man, that if he can put up 42 points a game, ain't nobody care about that. Nope. Ain't nobody care. Is that not – I don't, there's not going to be another radio show host in the country that says ain't nobody going to care today ain't except the, the one you people just heard. So, you know, count your blessings. Ain't that the truth. This is the good stuff here. Yeah. But, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm sure – does that bother you at all, the last name? Or the fact that, quite frankly, it's not like he has – what's he done? Who are you talking? What's his claim to fame as you a coach? I, you think more I than care, just man? the last you think, name? You think I'm now the the voice of conscience, the, the the voice of reason? Come on, man! You think I care? Put up 42, man. You no, but I, I'm asking. Well, sure, I, that question I got it. But what I I I legitimately haven't looked enough at his background. He's been an OC for two years. Yes, I mean I and, think he might have been an OC at Baylor under his father, but I think that was mainly his dad calling the shots. I can pull that up right now. But I do know that uh, he did go to FAU and was uh, Lane's offensive coordinator last year when they won 10 games and uh, were a fairly solid team. And then he went to Houston, and uh, Lane and the Owls kind of uh, went down, um, if you will. But he was a passing game coordinator, wide receivers coach in the middle of it. I mean, he was there with his dad the whole time from 08 to 16. Uh, the last two years, 15 and 16, he was the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach at Baylor. Somebody on War Champ posted a really huge soliloquy of uh, Kendall Browse's accomplishments. I mean, just top, you know, top five, top ten uh, offenses just year in and year out. So uh, he, the, the proof is in the pudding. Now, some of that obviously was the Big 12, uh, but everybody in the Big 12 has got a big offense, and, and his offense and his dad's offense – uh, sort of uh, shown brighter than everybody else. So I guess ultimately at the end of the day, um, and this is just the, the craziness of sports, man, and, and college football in particular, he's an upgrade over Walt Bell automatically. You know, like right now, Walt, what, for whatever, however hot and cool Walt Bell was <laughs> six months ago, a year ago, uh, in the eyes of Florida State fans, Walt Bell was absolute trash. Um, I, I, I'm not being really facetious there, Corey. I mean, people are like, and, and listen, I'm, I'm not hurt that he left. I, I don't. Again, there's nothing that you could really be like, well, golly, we're, we lost this when we lost Walt Bell if you're a Florida State fan. I just thought, again, a guy who was given a decent amount of money to come here and be an OC, the fact that you could be so off the page with somebody in one year, uh, to me it was just kind of a, I don't know, I, I thought maybe more of a bad judgment on Willie's call to go after that guy as opposed to maybe Walt Bell's a bad guy. Maybe he maybe he went rogue. Maybe he did know what he was signing up for and was totally cool with it with Willie. And then... I mean, I think people are floating out things there that he almost was sabotaging Willie. He set up different, uh, or he told, I think, Sam Howell not to, to push his visit back later so that he knew he would be out of out of Tallahassee by then and could maybe help flip it. Just There's all these crazy theories going out there right now. So at the at the crux of it, though, people, Florida State fans, it would have been Hugh Freeze, it would have been awesome, he's great, I feel dirty about it because of X, Y, and C, but I think it's going to be a great thing. Now it's moved on to Kendall Browse, and it's, it's going to be a great thing. I actually like him better than Hugh Freeze because of X, Y, and Z. And for some reason, if Kendall Browles doesn't come to Tallahassee, it'll be okay because whoever else is going to get hired, actually I like that guy better because of this. So it's just it's a natural cycle of, of being a fan in the offseason when you're chasing coaches. Um, but, I mean, I think yeah, maybe – it, Again, it's a weird deal because, uh, you know, is Willie Taggart I, – I can't imagine someone like Kendall Bryles would would leave the job he has now. He, I mean, I know it's not a Power 5 job. But he is, I assume, running that show. Like major is Major Applewhite the head coach there? Yes, correct. Yeah, and he's an offensive guy too, obviously. So he has his hands on it. But I, I wouldn't think that uh he would leave that job unless he's been reassured. Uh yeah, man, it, you're running it. It's yours. And obviously that wasn't something Willie Taggart was floating around last year. So the the candidates to come be the offensive coordinator last year. Um, those coaching candidates, that pool wasn't nearly as big as this one. If Willie really, I mean, if Hugh Freeze was actually a potential candidate and a potential hire, then obviously Willie Taggart is floating it out there that he will let, he will give the offense over to someone. 
So even if that, you know, if you think that Willie Taggart is the issue, and I'm not saying he is or isn't, again, it's hard to judge what he did. I mean, we know the offense was uh, awful, but, you know, we also know that Willie Taggart has had offenses that have been very successful with him in large part being the coordinator. So he can do it, but in one year, if he's willing to just completely give over the keys to someone else, a complete outsider that he doesn't know at all, well, you know, I I wonder what that says about how bad this season was because that seems like a dramatic move, like a a dramatic turn, uh, you know, not heel turn, but turnabout. Then all of a sudden, he uh, that he's willing to uh, just give the give give his baby over to someone after one bad year. But it was an awful year, so I wonder if somebody's been in his head. I mean, not in his head. If somebody's been in his ear, telling him to do that, administration, agent, other coaching buddies, or if he thought of it on his own, like I, you know, this is this isn't working. I, I need to hire somebody that I can just trust to get the job done. And I don't have to be the guy coaching the quarterbacks and coaching the offense the whole time. But it'll be interesting, man. And I don't know, you know, where they go if they don't get Kendall Bryles. Uh, again, I'm, um, you know, I was thinking about it on the drive back from New Orleans. I had a lot of time to think. Um, I thought over some things that had happened in New Orleans, obviously. The, those <laughs> things in New Orleans can stay with you for a while. I'm not going to lie. Um, but also, like, who would have thought that when Willie Taggart was hired, in December, and everybody was fired up, me most of all, that 11 months later we'd be saying, uh, we'd be thinking like his his uh, his tenure hinges on a freeze or a Bryles. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? Life comes at you fast, right? <laughs> it sure does, especially in this sport, man. It's That's just crazy that not in a million years, we thought Willie Tiger was the guy, right? Like that he's being brought over here for his offense. Not, oh, God, we got to get a freeze or a Bryles or a Kiffin or – or a Kingsbury or, or somebody to come coach this thing because this guy can't do like that's it seems like in just 11 months that's where we are is like a a, a, a Bryles man a Bryles yeah. is considered a potential savior of the Willie Taggart tenure yeah it'd just be like odd. somebody Crazy. hiring Dave Aranda but then Dave Aranda's got to bring in like a really good defensive coordinator after one year to to get everything back on track it is a bit of a bizarre uh, sort of turn of events. But again, I mean, it goes back to, I guess, deficiencies on the roster, right? The the worst offensive line of all time and uh, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. So um, it'd be, I mean, it'd be, if Bryles is coming, I mean, obviously, yeah, the, the proof is there. He He's certainly going to know what he's doing on a football field. Off it, when it relates to the, the student population, maybe, maybe not. You know, that's a, that's a checkered past to put it politely. And I know it wasn't he wasn't the head coach. He was on that staff. And that is his dad. So uh so that's being polite to say it's checkered. But on a football field, the guy obviously uh knows how to put up points and put up yards for sure. And he'd be a uh you might be able to recruit Texas. Certainly he's gonna have some connections there. Yeah. I but again, I think ultimately we're not embracing, not necessarily embracing, but we're not we're not bracing or expecting him to be here for a while. I mean, he's going to be renting, right? I mean, I'm not expecting him to buy a house. Yeah, no, you're right. If he if he did come and uh and had a couple good years, he'd be moving on to be a head coach again. That's a um, you know, the last name is tarnished a lot. Um, so he'd have to have a couple of really good years. But if he did, then yeah, somebody somebody would uh be certainly open to hiring him and maybe he could bring his dad on as a special assistant <laughs> i don't know about it. but yeah, I mean, I, i'm sure there's things that i'm sure the the administration i'll give them the benefit of the doubt on this and, and willie as well i mean i'm sure there's safeguards they can put in place that if if, if anything happens with i mean ultimately it was his father's program it was the bryles family business so you know they're the ones that are controlling the books and all that but but not in terms of finances but just in terms of the information flow, but this is Willie's program. So if if any, you know, sort of behavior were to happen by players involving the uh, the co-ed population, I mean, the you know that's stuff that Willie doesn't seem to stand for. And I'm sure the administration will will have some sort of chain of command that if there's anything that happens, and it, 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 they need to be aware of everything going on. So you know, well, he's and not I don't even think that. it's that. Like I don't think there's a there's a chance that it because it is Willie's program. There's not. I don't think there's a chance of this becoming. Florida State just because Kendall are becoming Baylor because of Bryles comes here. Yeah, it's I, just what are you saying when you hire him with that checkered past? 
And you, you know, you're a college football team and, and money talks, man. And you got to win games to make money. I get all that. That's more the, the, I would think the immediate concern, not the concern about, oh, this is going to happen again. And, and, uh, this is going to be really ugly. He's going to, he's going to let this stuff, um, you know, just uh, erode like it did at Baylor. Right. I don't think that's in play. I think it's just that last name and you're going to have to wear it and you're going to have to, you know, understand that they're going to people that look at this with a jaundiced eye, jaundiced eye, because, you know, what are you, you're saying what you, that, that, uh, you're okay with that la- that guy coaching at your school. And I'm not again, I'm not saying you should you even shouldn't be, but we all know what that last name is. So that is part of the deal, right? Just like Freeze. I mean, that was part of the deal. The off the field stuff has to be part of the deal. Especially at Florida State with what this program has been through or what it went through a half decade ago. It's something that I wonder how much I don't think it's a huge factor, but I think it would be a little bit of a factor is that last name and the way people might view a hire like that if he was getting hired as like the basketball coach at wake forest you know and had come from this sort of background like with the acc insulate him because part of me that that somewhat enjoyed it but also made me roll my eyes a lot about the whole hugh freeze press conference was it was so many sec guys it was so many national writers who had started in SEC markets that were sitting there and reveling and laughing and pointing and casting stones at Hugh Freeze, which I don't, listen, I don't care. Hugh Freeze, I have no affinity for the guy on a personal level. I just admire the fact that he seems to have really good offensive uh, production out of his teams. But part of me just kept thinking, man, if he would have gone to Tennessee, if he would have gone to Auburn, the rival fan base, like a Florida, Georgia fan would have made fun of Tennessee or Alabama would have made fun of Auburn. But I think ultimately, like, and I'm not trying to say, like, oh, you know, the, the media is pro-SEC, but in, in some regards, I think they would try to explain it away or they kind of insulate and, and protect themselves where I think Florida State leaves themselves much more open to it because obviously being in the ACC, not a football first conference, and then yeah. kind of being a, you know, a, a man without an island in this conference, just not being really well-respected enough, it feels like, within the other uh, what everybody else brings to the table. I, I do wonder how how much of that's going to be more difficult to, to bear the brunt of this because if North Carolina made a hire like this for basketball, I feel like, you know, Charlotte media and stuff wouldn't wouldn't cast stones. I think everybody will, will, will get their licks on Florida State. But then, hey, man, you move on. Hopefully you win some games. And um, the the narrative becomes Florida State and Willie Taggart have turned this thing around and Kendall Bryles uh, – you know, is off somewhere in two years, and, and Willie's got this thing uh, on the precipice of uh, rolling. No, no. Not on the precipice, buddy. Rolling. Rolling. We're going to be in New Orleans like each of the next three years for the playoffs. Oh, yeah. And we open up against LSU one of those years, right? Dang Skippy, son. Dang Skippy. Can't wait, man. Cannot wait. All right. Um, what about basketball? I, I was at the I – went, I went to the Nutcracker. Uh, By the I, way, like yeah. I told – yeah. So I told Stephanie, because we were at the casino, and I'm like, hey, I think i got to go back to the hotel and watch the second half of this game. Because um, I was at a party, and uh, and then she's like, well, what's Aslan doing? And I said, oh, he's going to the Nutcracker with his girlfriend. And she goes, oh, no. Yeah. Because I can't imagine that was your first choice to do on a Saturday night. But how was it? Uh, they're talented, man. It's uh, I mean, they did a lot of hard work. Um uh, <laughs> Yeah, there was a nice. Yeah, it sounds like you loved it. Sounds like you had a great time. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I, I just kind of, st- I, I stepped up. I'm like, let me just do all this stuff for the first Christmas. Like, I'll, I'll go to Thomasville and I'll chop her down a Christmas tree and mm-hmm. I'll sit through the Nutcracker with her. That way, I can like go home for a week and a half and hang out with my buddies and drink and you know, cavort. Um, right. Well, not cavort, right? right? Cavort's like yeah. hitting on other women. I don't women. think you meant that word. No, no, just you know, just yeah, just go around with the, with the guys, just gallivant and stuff. Just be a man. And, and uh, you know, get a couple hall passes already under the belt early on. So that was kind of my, uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing chess out here, brother. I'm always playing chess when it comes to the relationship game, man. But um, that was good, man. She dressed up, you know, nice. Got to show off my lady. That was good. So, um, I mean, I, I told her, I'm like, I'm probably not going. She's like, well, you know, everything that we do now is going to be, we're setting a precedent and it's going to be tradition. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about going to Nutcracker every year. But I'm like, I'll go to one maybe in New York City sometime. But, uh, but, but nothing, uh, you know. Only big time now, buddy. Only the big time now. I'll be honest with you, Aslan. I don't know if you want to keep this in the show. I accidentally just uh, completely uh, clicked out of the link on the yeah. computer. Yeah. 
um, and then logged back in. So the last minute, I didn't hear a word of what you said. Awesome. You didn't miss out on anything, per usual. I don't believe that. All right, it what about the basketball like you were team? Wrapping it up and saying what a great time you had. Yeah, how about that? Here's the th- I should. These are things. File this under things Aslan shouldn't admit. Um, it's going to be really difficult for me uh, to sit here and, and do long form podcasting with my friend Corey Clark if I have to sit here and, and analyze basketball. I just I just don't know how you analyze basketball. Um, I really don't. So thankfully, Corey, you watched the game on Saturday. A well, I watched the second, the second half, and you watched half. the first half, so it was perfect. Yeah. yeah. What were your thoughts um, on the second? Yeah, half? no, I don't. I mean, and it was a it's a December game against a non conference opponent. It wasn't a big deal. Um, it is good that uh, apparently Kofer is Phil Kofer is getting closer and closer. I would be really surprised at this point if he didn't play in their next game because their next game isn't for a week. Um, they get like eight days off or nine days off before they play again. So. It actually works out well. So they, without Kofer, they go eight and one, and their only loss is to the defending national champions uh, in the final minute. And then, um, you know, they get him back in time to get him acclimated before they start conference play in January. So it kind of works out pretty well, all things considered. And they got younger guys some some valuable minutes. Uh, Raquan Gray, I don't, I think played more than he would have if if Kofer was uh, available. Polite. Um, all, you know, most of those guys really played a lot more than they would have. And I think now you have some real viable options off the bit. The one, the best thing I thought about, uh, Saturday for Florida state was, uh, David Nichols. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, that that's big. That's the kind of guy that they brought in that they thought they were bringing in. Now he's not going to score 16 a night off the bench. That's not happening, but he's a guy. He should be a guy that if you leave him open, he's going to knock down open threes and he's going to knock him down. He's a good shooter. Um, and he's a, he's a he's a nice player. He's a good scorer. He plays hard on defense. He's you know can be a little reckless with the ball sometimes, but you just got to shake the Albany out of him. Um, but by and large, he's a nice role player for them in the mold of C.J. Walker. You know, I, I think that's what they were hoping they were getting. I think he's uh, you know he he hasn't played maybe as well as C.J. Walker played last December, but I think by March. He could be a much better player than C.J. Walker was for that team last year. That's that, I think that's what you hope, or a much bigger contributor than C.J. Walker was. But, you know, other than that, man, I could not – I don't know how it was in the first half. Did they show Danny Hurley the whole first half too? I barely even got to watch the first half. And by barely, I didn't even get to watch the first half. We were out the door. Oh. Yeah. I'm bringing nothing to the table on basketball. And I'm not trying to be – listen, I'm not being disrespectful of what they're – this is awesome. Florida State's number you 10 nut, now in the we country. You get it. You had to do Nutcracker. I got you. Yeah. They're number 10 in the country right now. Uh, this that is, is awesome. crazy, right? The it's number fantastic. 10 team in the country. You, yeah. best, you best get on basketball, buddy. It's a basketball school now. So this is going to be a basketball show, basketball-heavy it, show. It's just, you know – uh, they got they can't they can't turn the ball over as much anymore. They got to work on their spacing. Um, right? They, they yeah, we're mix not. Up. Th- this ain't the show for that. I can't do that. I just can't, no. I can't. We're, and I can't either. I'm not yeah. smart enough to do it. Yeah. Um, so I I couldn't do that either. Uh, but no, the broadcast for the people that watched it on Saturday, I assume a good number of you did. I've never seen anything like it in my life, man. Literally, and I only watched the second half. I bet, and this is no exaggeration. I bet they showed Danny Hurley fifty times. And I and I bet they showed Leonard Hamilton twice, once maybe that I remember. I mean, it was not that one point when in a, in a, an important stretch with like six minutes left. It's a seven point game. They go to a split screen where they're showing Danny Hurley reacting to the actual what's happening on the court, which is on the right side of the screen. They split the screen down the middle so you could watch Danny Hurley react. It was nuts because he's a he's a psychopath, man. He's nuts. Well, he is, but who? I mean, who is he? What's he done? He What's took Rhode that? Island to the tournament last year. I guess I, it, was, it was just crazy. It was nuts that they did that. I mean, he hasn't accomplished anything close to what Leonard Hamilton has accomplished in his life. And I don't want a Leonard Hamilton cam either because, well, heaven knows that would be a pretty boring camera. <laughs> yeah. Just be him with the say, hey, Terrence Mann just hit a four-point play or they just gave up eight points in a row. It's still the same Leonard Hamilton expression. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't know if they thought that was entertaining, but it was really, really off-putting. Like, why – who this this isn't Roy Williams or Bill Self or Kay? This is Danny Hurley. He's the I, third best coach in his family. I think that's the reason. I mean, it's it's a Saturday game. UConn's the, the national brand in this game, but they're not the ranked team. And Florida State obviously doesn't bring in a lot of eyeballs when it comes to basketball. Look at this crazy guy going nuts and having a conniption 
on every single possession, ladies and gentlemen. Except that, except when he got the technical. He got attacked late in the game. Never saw a replay of that. Oh, yeah? Never saw what he said. But what we did see, which I think is awesome, is I think it's it's near the end of the game. You see Danny Hurley. I think he says F off, but yeah. not he didn't he didn't abbreviate it. Or shut up, one or the other, yeah. Yeah, but I thought he said that, and then he said shut up. Okay. And he, you could tell he's looking at the bench, the Florida State bench. Yeah. And then you see Phil Kofer pointing to the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah. So, like, he he and Phil Kofer, I'm sure Phil Kofer probably told him to shut up or be sit down or something. Because it must, it's just got to, it's incessant. It's oh, every yeah. every four seconds he's he's doing something ridiculous with the histronics and the yelling. Uh, you'd think he'd be different than that because he's a family of coaches. But anyway, um, and then I'm sure Phil Kofer told him something, and he told him to shut up, or you're you're not even playing, or something like that. And Phil Kofer just kept pointing to the scoreboard, which was a nice comeback for Phil, uh, right. and good for him, man. I mean, that was, that's just nuts. Um, but yeah, uh, otherwise, not you know, not a great. It was a nice win, but there was really not much to take home from it. They they're ready. They were ready for a break. It was really ugly, man, and that game took forever. Like I, you know, I like basketball. I like college basketball. I'm a college basketball fan. I'm in New Orleans. I'm wanting to go do some things, eat some things, drink some things, and listen to music. And uh, I'm waiting for that game to end. I can't do it until that game ends. And that second half must have taken five hours. So yeah. like 30 fouls in the second half. And then you had a Hurley Cam. It wasn't an enjoyable watch, but Florida State did win. Terrence Mann played really well in the second half. Um, Cabin Gelly had 50. Cabin Gelly's good, man. Um, Cabin Gelly's a pro. Um, that's another one of those Leonard Hamilton specials. Just find a guy that nobody really knew about and uh, turn him into a, a – I don't even think he's a fringe NBA player. I think he's an NBA player. Uh, that guy's just really good. But anyway, so there's there's your basketball analysis. 8-1, don't play again until next week. SEMO, Southeastern Missouri State coming to town. 17th. Yeah, you don't want any part of this, SEMO. Red Hawks. The you don't Red want Hawks. any part of this. Something like that, so. Um, what about the NFL? Anything happened in the NFL? How about – so I know Belichick's the best that's ever done it. Right. Why would Gronkowski be in on defense? Um, I think they rightly, wrongly were bracing for maybe Tannehill throwing a Hail Mary. So but he, he would have had to throw it like 70 yards in the air. He can't do that. Yeah, you never know. Adrenaline starts kicking. And I know he's got a bum shoulder and everything. I, I, that's the explanation that was floated out there. I, I, I don't have anything better. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's what it was, is we want our 6'5 guy on the goal line for the Hail Mary that he can bat it down. But, man, you don't – I mean, that's – I get it if you do it with Julio or when Cal, they, the Lions used to do it with Calvin, Calvin Johnson. Um, but those guys still run like cornerbacks. Gronkowski doesn't run like a corner. He's, I know he's big and fast for his size, but man, what a misstep! What a it's an awesome play, by the way. It shouldn't have really mattered. It was just a great. It was one of the all-time great plays, and it won't matter. The Patriots will still get to the Super Bowl, so at least for a day, we all got to be happy at the Patriots' expense. Yeah. Well, how about you, man? Atlanta United championship comes back to the A. Yeah, it's been a long time, Aslan. Twenty-three years, and I remember. Um, you know, I remember being there on draft night at the MLS when we were when they went through the first draft because you know I'm a huge soccer fan. Right, right. Um, you know that we I talk to you about it all the time. You're our footy guy. And saying, look, this is going to be the year. This is going to be the year. Um, I like what they're doing here. Uh, I can't tell you the coach's name. I can tell you one of the players' name, and it's Martinez, and he is awesome. Uh, for an MLS player, I don't know what he equates to on the world level. That's what I've always thought was interesting about the MLS and why I never thought it would be a huge sport in America. Is because in every other sport in America that we 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 you know watch that we care about, the best in the world come to America to play. Baseball, football, nobody in football, nobody in the world plays football, but baseball and hockey and basketball, the best in the world come to play here. But in soccer, they go away from America typically. Correct. So I was always wondering what if it would ever catch on in America, but somehow Atlanta. It's just galvanized the city, man. It's nuts. And it's not just that because they're good. Like last year was the same thing. My Facebook feed for high school friends, they're just they're go they were they were all in from the moment they got a team. It's really bizarre because obviously Atlanta doesn't have a great reputation as a sports city, but man, they have the best you could I mean, I don't think you could argue it. They have the best fans in, in MLS. They had seventy thousand people at that game. So 
I don't know if it, if the jinx is over necessarily, but I, I really do. I'm not trying to downplay it. I, I, it's a really neat moment because it, the people in Atlanta do care. And typically when people in Atlanta care about a sports team, that sports team breaks their heart, rips it out of their chest, pees on it, and throws it over a bridge. So Atlanta United, they were the best team in the league. They got there. They won when it mattered, Aslan. And I really am happy. I really am happy. And now the, the seal has been broken. You make it sound like you're a Buffalo fan. At least you got a ring, man. At least you got a World Series. You got a, you got the Commissioner's Trophy. You got one. I of do, them. and I was there. I got to. I was actually there. I got to celebrate that. So you're right. And I always tell people that because we have had a lot of heartache. But number one, I got to feel what it felt like to win a Super Bowl for about ten minutes. When you're up twenty-eight three with three minutes left to go in the third quarter, you're a Super Bowl champion. That's yeah. just it's washed over you. You yeah. feel it. You're it. You're celebrating already. Um, not me because I'm a pessimist at heart, but still, I was there like, all right, we've won this thing. So for 10 minutes, I got to feel what that felt like. It was pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Can't wait to feel it for like a whole year instead of 10 minutes. And then baseball actually really got to experience one. And I, you know, I can go watch those highlights on YouTube anytime I want. It really is, I, you know, when you think about, uh, you know, Florida State fans, obviously nobody feels sorry for Florida State fans. You've got to win three national championships in 25 years. That's pretty awesome. Well, how many schools have done that? four in the country um that's you know that's pretty neat so yeah we, we did get ours so we're not like buffalo um but still we've had a lot of heartache aslan we have a lot of heartache i don't know if my life would be any better if wollers doesn't hang that slider to Larritz in 96 i don't know i don't know if my life would be any different maybe it's a butterfly effect maybe right now i'd be the commissioner of baseball if he hadn't hung that slider i don't know how things work um <laughs> Where where our where our destinies take us, but I do know I was there in '95 and I got to celebrate with my dad um, a World Series championship. Can't ever take that away from you, man. So suck on that, Buffalo. Yeah. Um, I felt like I have to do this um, monologue about race, but I don't really oh. feel like doing because I don't feel good right now. Okay. Um, we've done about thirty minutes of show. That's pretty good. One That's of these days, I'll show. probably. Yeah, if you're not feeling well, I've got you know I got a case of the New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, hangover. You've got a. Uh, you don't feel well. I think 30 minutes is a good good start. And yeah. then you know obviously we'll come back big and big and heavy tomorrow when they when they announce uh, you know whoever Kendall they're going to announce for the OC. What's what's going to be so? Somebody tweeted at me that if you know Hugh Freeze is going to come here, we, we'd be the the freeze tag offense. Um, thought okay. that was that was good. That was good. So I don't know what we're gonna, with Bryles and, and Taggart. We'll have to figure out what they, you know, like Brangelina, like, you know, the, the marriage of the two names. We'll yeah, to, I don't know. Yeah. Bry Tag? That's not, no. Uh-uh. No, yeah. we, we'll have to figure something out. Yeah. Taggles? <laughs> there we go. And all the players will be known as Taggles. Done. Hey. Okay. So, uh, so, yeah, that works out perfectly. So the Taggle offense. Yeah, there you go. All right. Fantastic. Yeah, so uh, we'll come back. Uh, we'll give a show on uh, Wednesday because we assume – uh, Florida State will announce uh, their new offensive coordinator at some point on um, on Tuesday, which would be pretty cool. Do you think there'll be like a uh, – you know, part of me wondered this about Hugh Freeze. I mean, I don't want to say the word ego, but I guess ego is probably the right word. I wonder how much of him taking that job at Liberty was, was just to have that day. Like have that day, that 19 minutes and 34 seconds or however long his introductory press conference was, just to sort of get up there and – either thumb his nose his detractors or just to, you know, make his testimonial to his savior. Uh, because he probably really wouldn't have had that if he got hired at Florida State. Like, are, are they going to – are we going to have a press conference when we hire an offensive coordinator? Well, they didn't last year. Um, this year seems like a little bit different because, it's you know, they were hiring coaches left and right last year. Um, so, I, I, I mean, I hope they do. You you need to. But uh, who knows? They didn't last year, so I wouldn't – I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say it's 100% going to happen. It should, but I don't know if it will. Um, but, yeah, you know, again, that I, I'm just glad I didn't have to be at a Hugh Freeze press conference. Yeah. Listening to that, that would have been hard to uh, that been hard to listen to. Oh, hey. Um, actually, I'll mention this on tomorrow's show. Did we ever find out, and I, I teased this last week and we never talked about it. It was kind of a joke. How come Florida's not playing UCF in a bowl game? Yeah, I think um, – is that the selection? Where is Florida? Like the, Florida's in the in the Peach Bowl, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they I think didn't UCF want to send UCF year. to the Peach Bowl again. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the the legitimately the only uh, explanation. 
<sighs> man, and, I, and I'll be honest with you. Um, my man, Brendan Sinone, I like him uh, a lot. He's been on the beat for a while, works at 247. He's a UCF fan, a and lot. he's a uh, whiny, whiny UCF fan, just on Twitter. I don't think in real life he is, but on Twitter he is. I shouldn't – I never I, – I guess I'm not a big underdog fan anyway, but, man, I'm going to be rooting for LSU to beat them by 50. <laughs> Which yeah. makes me a bad person, right? Like the, yeah, the, the LSU, the school with the who, g- a gazillion dollars against the the pesky upstart from my home, the the state I live in, um, the underdog. Everybody counting them out, and I hope LSU just whoops them, like beats them so bad they give up the sport. They lost their starting quarterback, and they still kept the undefeated streak alive. Man, you got to respect UCF. Oh, man. I do, I do. I just again, their fans are doing them a disservice. That's all. Oh, stop it! No, I think their fans are doing them a disservice with all. Well, not even that. It's just the whole the national championship nonsense, and we're getting screwed, and we belong in the playoff. It's like, no, you don't, man. You just don't. You just don't. But it's cool. Let us root for you. Let us be excited. Like, uh, you, you know, I, 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 to be honest with you, though, I did the same stuff with Boise, with Boise State. Back when Boise State was, uh, whenever that was, like, when, when would that have been? 07, 08? Yeah. When they almost got into the national championship game, and they, lo- they lost to Colin Kaepernick. Um, and that kept them out. Like, golly, I was just so sick of hearing about Boise State all the time. Uh, and, you know, you play in a weak conference. So, anyway... Um, yeah, I, I think the way they've kind of set, they, they keep at pretending like they're getting screwed. I think it works out perfect for UCF. You don't want to go in the playoff and lose to Alabama by a hundred. Yeah. Go, go play it out. Go play another sec team that isn't going to be nearly as invested. I'm sure a few of those guys won't even be playing. Um, you're not going to win cause you don't have your quarterback, but maybe you can, uh, you know, at least acquit yourself well and, uh, you know, build on that. Oh, Hey, who, who did your guy win the Heisman? Oh yeah, so yeah, I, I voted for Kyler Murray. Okay, and I voted for two of two, and then I voted for Tamori and Terry third. And uh, the thing with Ky- like, I, I don't know, man. The Heisman's such a weird deal. Like, two is awesome. He is, but they only played one good, like one legitimate. They were only in one game the whole year, like legitimately in a game in the fourth quarter. And his backup came and won it for him because he was playing terribly. He was hurt. But he was playing terribly, so it's hard to give a guy a Heisman who plays his work, you know, who plays that bad in their biggest game. That was all. It was real hard to do. Plus, the other, it's not like I chose some slappy. Kyler Murray's awesome. Yeah, uh, he's really fun to watch, and I, I don't like the thought of just, hey, I guess we're just going to give it to the Oklahoma quarterback every year. That kind of sucks. But, uh, but by and large, man, I thought it wasn't like Kyler Murray just had one great game and, and, uh. It just happened to come at the right time. Like he was awesome all year. And so was Tua until the last game when it mattered. And meanwhile, Kyler Murray on the same day accounted for like 400 something yards and five touchdowns. I know the Big 12 is different, but I just, if Tua would have made, if Tua would have played just a little bit better, I probably would have given it to him. Not that I don't, I don't, it didn't come down to one vote, did it? I didn't even look at the results. No, I don't think so. Was it a pretty big, comfortable margin? Uh, I didn't look. I was at the Nutcracker. Come on, oh. man. <laughs> I apologize, man. That's right. <laughs> that was a Nutcracker, oh, man. Nice. Come on. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Did they? Um, was it like a a New York production that was traveling? No, it was Tallahassee. The Tallahassee Ballet put it on. Oh, well, that's cool. There you go. Supporting the local economy. Supporting local artists and dancers. That's neat. Uh, Kyler Murray had five hundred seventeen first place votes. Tua had two hundred ninety nine. Kyler had uh, 2,167 total points. Tua had 1,871. I don't even think that was Okay, so it wasn't just, it didn't come down to one single vote. So it wasn't just on me. How many did Tamori and Terry have other than me? Uh, Tamori and Terry had um, two third place votes. So somebody else. Well, it's funny if somebody uh, tweeted at me because I said I I voted Tamori and Terry third or Dwayne Haskins. I can't remember. (laughs) And the guy's like, what's with all the disrespect for Dwayne Haskins? How could you not vote for him? And I'm like, dude, I voted him for third. You really thought I voted, you know, a 33 catch wide receiver on a five and seven team for the Heisman. Now, you and I both know he's the best player in the country. Correct. But still, you got to put up numbers and you got to win games or it doesn't matter. Yeah. By the way, um, we do know that Derek Brooks and um, whoever was Bubba Watson, they're, they're not from Boca Raton. We know that. 
Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Somebody got mad. Yeah, come on. We know, yeah. But yeah, the guy said that. He's like, how could y'all scream out Boca Raton? I'm like, man, I know Roy Jones is from Boca Raton, too. All the great Pensacola athletes are from Boca Raton. Oh, man. Oh, hey, I'm ready to do my uh, my monologue on race. Are you ready? Oh, I think that's something we should tease for tomorrow. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, good stuff. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, talking about show. race, talking about Oh, offensive coordinators. Offensive coordinators. Uh, maybe a new offensive line coach, right? Because Kendall Browse supposedly wants to bring his own guy. So who knows? Maybe Greg Fry's gone. Maybe Greg Fry moves somewhere else. Uh, go on warchant.com. Read that great analysis column from uh, Irish O'Fell. Uh, if you think it's as easy as just moving some guys from on coach or on field coaches to off the field assistants, not so fast, my friend. Um, mm-hmm. check it all out and when it happens first and it's for sure happening um, we're going to have it because that's what we do at Warchant.com He's Corey Maslow, thanks for listening have a great day everybody Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting and now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.